Unfortunately for most Illustrator beginners, an illustration that's this rough is pretty common. But with a few easy tips, you'll be on your way to pen tool perfection. To get started, we're going to come over to the ellipse tool or press L, and then we're going to drag out a circle holding shift, and that's going to keep the circle perfect. Now, we're also going to want to make sure that you can see what we're doing. So I'm going to change my stroke and increase it by about 10 pixels. There we go. And change the color. Let's also make sure that we go to transform and make sure scale corners and scale strokes and effects is off. With that done, let's start placing shapes on our bird, this shape representing the body. A few quick tips using shift, control, and option, you can get better control over your shapes as you readjust and move them. So now that we're done with the circles, what about this wing shape? It could go as a triangle or a rectangle, but ultimately I'm going to go with the rectangle because that's just the easier tool to use. Do we really need the feet to define what a puffin looks like? I don't think so. With the feet gone, let's go and focus on the beak. We could draw this out with the pen tool, but the problem is we might not get perfect symmetry. Instead, what we're going to do is pull out two circles and align them to the circle on the head. For our next step, we're going to be using the Shape Builder tool, and in order to do that, our shapes need to be overlapping. The best way of doing that is hitting Control or Command Y and going into Outline Mode. You'll see our old illustrations in the way, so we'll delete that and say hello to Abstract Art. Toggling back and forth, you can see that the lines are actually intersecting, but we do want to improve it because it just makes it easier if we tighten it up. If you move it and you're zoomed out, it might look like it's intersecting, but zoom in and you'll see that there's still a gap. If you run into a problem with Shape Builder, that's probably the first thing you should check. Next, we're going to go into the Shape Builder tool or Shift M, and then we're going to click on our beak. That's going to create a new object. Now hitting V, we can select our other objects and just simply delete them. I'd recommend double checking to make sure that there's not duplicate objects because sometimes depending on how you set it up, that can happen. Now that we have our general basic shapes, let's get a little bit more creative. We're going to connect the body and the head together. To do this, we're going to hit P or the pen tool. We're going to go and click and add a point along the line. Using the direct select tool or hitting V, we're going to select an existing point and we're going to hit delete. And we're going to do the same thing on the body. And like that, you'll see that this opens up a gap between the two. Using the P key or clicking on the pen tool, we're going to click on the anchor point at the end of this path and do the same on the other side. That is actually going to connect these two. We're left with sharp corners on each side. Now we could use the corner tool and drag this out, but I generally advise to keep as minimal of anchor points as you can. Let's undo what we did with the corner tool. And now we're going to select the top anchor point and go to the convert to smooth button up here in the menu. You'll see what that does is that actually adds another bar for our Bezier curve. We'll delete our bottom anchor point using the delete anchor point tool and then we're going to use the direct select to drag that up and I'm holding shift and it's going to bring back that curve without having it be multiple anchor points. And if you want, you can come in here and kind of mess around with it to just get that a little extra smoothness. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. You, you can modify it to the way you want. 
My next tip is to bring energy into your objects. You'll see that we have this 90 degree angle. Because it's perfectly flat, it's at a rest position, meaning it's low energy. Now, if this was to be a logo, what you'd wanna be able to do is have it feel more energetic. The easiest way of doing that is coming over here to the shear tool, which you can find under the scale menu. Holding shift and dragging, we can add just a subtle bit of angle, which will add a bit more movement and make it feel less illustratory, as I've been calling it. We'll drag up the corner tool and as we do so, let's make sure that it's generally matching that bottom part of the puffin. Consistency is key for a clean illustration. I'm now noticing that the balance of where the wing is ultimately going to be doesn't really match where I want it to be, so I move it around a little bit to find just the right spot. Then I'm going to select the corners and drag them down. Now, if you don't like that circle radius, there's actually a recent corners tool addition, which is the relative corner. And you can see, I don't really love those for this situation, so I'm going to undo it, but that's a really handy tool. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to clean up the body. The easiest way of doing that is just by selecting both the wing, going into the shape builder tool and holding alt option, clicking on the stroke. You can see our puffin shape is really coming through. I'm going to focus on the weight of the object. Now, there isn't a right answer to this, but some considerations is, if this is a logo, you need it to be legible from either a small or far away size. That said, you don't want the weight too thin, so it's not legible at smaller sizes, but you also don't want it to be too bulky, so it just doesn't visually read well. The next thing we're gonna focus on is this gap between the shoulder and the head. We wanna be able to match this. To do that, I'm going to select the anchor point using the direct select tool, and then I'm going to just simply delete it. Now, you don't want to use the pen tool because it won't actually open up that beak. Double clicking into it, we're going to clean up this path just a little bit. We got it back to a good spot, but we want to have that gap. So I'm going to add an anchor point and delete the other one. And doing the same thing on the other spot, we're going to get that general gap there. The next problem we're solving for is the fact that our objects are all made of paths, meaning we won't be able to match the radius of the shoulder to the beak area. The way to solve for this is we're going to outline our stroke. We're going to go to Object, Outline Stroke, and you'll see now that our paths have become shapes. Next I'm going to copy and paste into place by using Command Shift V. And then I'm going to change, just for this, I'm going to change the color so you can see how offset path works. I can already tell that this little area is going to be a problem, so I'm going to use the delete anchor tool to get rid of them. With those out of the way, I'm going to send the object to the back. You'll see it hidden. We'll go up to object, path, offset path. Now, bumping it up or down, we can see that we can change the size of that offset. We're going to match it to this corner here because we can move that wing, but we can't as easily move the beak. Hitting enter, I'm going to move the wing now just a little bit. We can actually have this overlap just a tiny bit because circles create visual optical illusions that they're further away than they are. So it's okay if that wing goes over just a little bit. The next thing I'm gonna do is select all of our objects and using the shape builder tool, I'm going to deselect those spots. And now you'll see it matches perfectly. You see there's some extra background left, so holding shift in the arrow key, I'm moving this over, deleting the background, and then doing the opposite arrow key to move it perfectly back into place. 
With that done, we can actually start merging this together in the Shape Builder tool. Using the addition mode, I drag all the shapes together. I'm gonna leave the wing for later, but you can see that it actually did a pretty good job down there. But up here we have some wrinkly little anchor points that we can use the pen tool to come in and delete. Like that, I'm really happy with how this puffin is turning out, but there's a couple more things we can add to just add a little more flair. So the first thing that I like to do, especially when we have something as round as this puffin, is make sure that these edges are matching the whole aesthetic. Compared to the wing, you can see just how sharp that is. So let's bring this down. If I just selected these two, you'll see that their radiuses, even though the numbers are the same, they don't actually really match. And that's because of the limit of that angle. So instead, I'll actually go into each one individually and kind of create a style. You'll see I'm going on four for this one. This one, I'll bump up a little bit more, but you'll see that it's that circular radius and we lose that sharp edge. So I'm going to undo this and reselect that corner and I'm gonna go into that relative corner mode and bump it up. And you can see, even though it's rounded, it still feels more sharp when you zoom out. You can see how that subtle little corner can soften up these harsh edges. These two points are also good candidates for the relative corner tool because you want them to stay sharp. My next tip as we look at points like this, is you'll notice if we use the same radius, it actually optically looks wrong. And that's because the inside radius should be smaller than the outside radius. To fix this, we're once again going to have to select each of our corners manually and add the corner by dragging or selecting in the panel your corner size. We're starting to look really consistent. Let's finish up the wing by going to outline stroke Holding Shift M, we're going to go to the Shape Builder and dragging down our additive version, we're going to merge all the shapes together. And just doing what we did, we're going to come in here and change our corner radius. Consider as you're adding the numbers up to make sure that they visually match each other. That was at about four pixel radius, but you'll notice that if I come in here, it doesn't quite feel right. Instead, I'm going to use a smaller number to make it visually match each other. That's the thing about the corner tool is you can't just jump into it and put the same number on each corner because they're each going to be different. We're getting really close, but there's one last little detail I feel like we could add to this puffin. I think if we didn't do it, it would be fine, but it's the eye. If you look at puffins, they have these really cool eyes that are a very defining feature. To get that, what we're gonna do is use the pen tool, holding down shift, we're gonna create just a right angle Holding down Shift M, using Alt to delete, we'll delete our extra. The eye seems a little small. I'm going to resize it. Right about there works. The next thing I'm going to do is go into those corners and round them out. I want to zoom out really quick as well and just make sure that it's matching that visual language. I still feel like that 90 degree angle is lacking energy. So I'm going to add an anchor to it right here and then hit that smooth button. Going over to S or scale, I'm going to hold shift and move it until those Bezier handles are in the right spot for me to be able to use the direct select tool and just bump it over a couple pixels. Now, you'll notice that I still have those sharp edges. 
To fix that, all we need to do is go to the Convert to Smooth tool. You made it this far, so you might as well hit like, subscribe, and turn on notifications for more content coming out your way. That subscribe will help me hit my first goal of 1,000 subscribers. Let's get back to our final design, and here it is.